Next, we visit the Cumberland Mountain studio of one of Tennessee's most famous and most talented natives. Red Grooms has spent most of his life in New York City. However, we found him back in his home state pursuing a new artistic interest. You see, Red, who hates war, is also fascinated with the one that tore this country apart. I was a tremendous uh, film fan in the late 40s and, of course, early 50s. My big criteria was how much sword play and how big the, the, the crowd scenes were. So, in other words, I liked action. I collected toy soldiers, and uh, I presume that's with my, you know, love of this military spectacle came the Civil War. Most artists only dream of the success that Red Grooms has enjoyed for over a half a century. The works of this native Nashvilleian are displayed in some of the most prestigious galleries in the world. While New York has been his home and inspiration for many years, Red's Tennessee roots and the 150th anniversary of the Civil War are turning his talents in a southern direction. I had this little set they would call Peggy Men, which were small little abstract figures. I would get down on the floor in my room and just be do play an army with these pieces up till I was about 18 years old. I remember my dad came in and he said, son, you've got to stop doing this, you know, you're almost a grown man. And it was hard for me to break off from that kind of play. At the same time, in the very same room, uh, a very good friend of mine became a professional soldier. And we would have discussions about the morality of, of uh, warfare and particularly uh, the killing of other human beings. And I was very much a pacifist, even though I had been this, had this avid interest in the pageantry of war. In 1959, I, had, I was living in New York, and I, I made uh, two Civil War works. I made a painting of Robert E. Lee, and I made a sculpture of uh, a Confederate soldier. As I think back, I guess I was a bit homesick, the reason I did that. Then it lay completely latent until I came to uh, the Cumberland Mountains in the mid-90s, in 95. I started uh, pretty seriously doing Civil War stuff. I sometimes question my interest in this. I, I actually, uh, I, I don't really believe in uh, killing people myself, personally. Therefore, I, I'm totally against wars of any kind. But unfortunately, I also have this fascination about it. Every day, I, you know, I go out and I, you know, how many men am I gonna kill today, you know? At the same time, you realize all those men, whether they were killed or su survived, went through a tremendous piece of history. And they are famous themselves for doing that. I'm sure all their relatives uh, can't wait to talk about it. I would. I know it's a powerful subject, and uh, when I got into this, I sort of stayed away from the actual battles. But I knew that, in fact, that's everything. That's, that's the focus, and that it's the glamour also. It's like if you go to a casino, you, you've got to accept gambling as the star, you know, and the, the battles are the star of this. So I knew I would do it. The first one I did was uh, what I called the, the scrimmage of the split rail fence. I made this up completely. I didn't read about this. My dad was, he was a country guy, and so we had a split rail fence in front of our house in Nashville that he was always fooling with. Oftentimes in the Civil War thing, it's just one house or something like that. The whole battle is, is that becomes its name. So, so this was my first effort, and this is not really a battle, but it it has bloodshed. There's mayhem, and this was my first involvement in in the fighting. And then the uh, the one I'm doing now is is a big battle. I know this terrific carnage. There was terrific carnage. This, was, this is what was called a hornet's nest. And uh, the Federals put up a tremendous defense here. 
but eventually they were driven off. This was the first day at Shiloh, which uh, the Confederates basically won, but the next day they got pushed back to Corinth. So the battle is more or less kind of called a draw. When I started this thing about 1999, I didn't have any goals, I was just doing it, but now this suddenly, and I didn't even think about a sesquicentennial until, you know, last year somebody told me about it and uh, now I have a goal and I can also see a potential closure. Even though now I'm 73 years old and people ask me do you, do you have anything left to do? It's, it's not just interest in the Civil War, it's interest to find a big subject to work with, to use my my stored techniques and ambitions to, uh, and that's what it gives me really.